And welcome back YouTube friends, SKS Plays here with another exciting new addition to the channel. We're doing another franchise mode. We are creating a team. We are in Madden 12. Why Madden 12, do you ask? Because back then, franchise mode was indeed franchise mode. It was not this watered-down hogwash that you have today in Madden 21. Madden 21 looks great, plays great sometimes. But if you look up enough videos, you'll see its yearnings and its problems and all that stuff. That's why we're back in Madden 12. We are going to make a custom team based out of Louisville, Kentucky. And we're going to replace the Washington football team. They are called something else. I'm not going to say it because I will get demonetized on the YouTubes. But we are going to replace them and play in the NFC East. So without further ado, let's go in here and we'll take a look at the team. Now, I am going to have a few rules to make this a little bit harder. I will cover those once we get in. All right, we're here in the franchise menu. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our team. And who is the team we're going to be taking over? The Cupcake newly formed team out of Louisville, Kentucky. It's none other than the Bourbon City Coopers. What is a Cooper, you ask? That is a person trained to make wooden cask barrels, vats, buckets, tubs, trowels, anything from lumber that you use to do bourbon in. City of Louisville, Kentucky has a large history and a long history indeed of bourbon. The bourbon trail runs through there, and that is the perfect team to bring in to the NFL. Kentucky has for a long time wanted to have a professional sports team, and they will now. And again, we are going to bump out the team that shall not be named down here let me find them, the football team from Washington. Get out of here. We are ready to go. Bourbon City is making its way. File is loaded. We will also go over here. I had to do the best I could with the logo. So here is your Coopers. I set them on Cupcake. We have a huge cap room. We are a 73 offense, 76 defense. But All right, let's talk about some of the rules that are going to be enforced for the rebuilding of the Bourbon City Coopers. Now, we're going to be playing with a really subpar team. And down in the description below, you'll see the franchise rules. These are taken from Mr. Hurricane's Madden 09 Cupcake Rebuild. I have tweaked some of them. But just going down the list, teams must be made customly with the Cupcake roster template. I have done that. In franchise mode, you will release your starting quarterback because they're essentially a good first-round rookie quarterback. We've done that, and I've signed the worst possible replacement as a third string. There is no trading allowed because the trading system in Madden is very buggy, and you can take advantage of it. So the only way to really grow your team is through free agency and drafting. There are free agency rules. In year one, no signings are allowed except for injury replacements. As I found out in, I'll show some clips from the four preseason games I did, and I'll tell you why we went ahead and simulated, not simulated, but played through them without you all really seeing a lot of them, is you had to find out who your players were, and a lot of them were injured. So when I went to replace them, I had to sign the lowest rated players in those positions. And this was for players that was out for the rest of the year and the whole year. After the first year, though, there will be some free agency with restrictions. So the way to unlock more free agency abilities is your team has to win. This is going to be incredibly tough being a terrible, terrible team at the start. If you don't win any games in Season 1, you will not be allowed to sign any free agents. If we somehow get between one and four wins, we will then be able to sign free agents with the zero to 69 overall. Pretty much these are roster fillers, people who can fill spots, but you know, without being able to draft every position, we cannot trade for more draft positions. Uh, this would be how we have to pretty much fill everything. If somehow we get the five to seven wins, we'll be allowed to sign free agents who are 70 to 75 in ability. These are usually backup caliber players in Madden and Madden 12. Uh, if we make it to eight and nine wins, which may be a couple of seasons down the road or a long, long time, I'll be able to sign potential starters with a rating of 76 to 80. 
Now, the only way to really open free agency is to accumulate 10 wins in a season or to get a playoff berth. As you saw this year, if the gods align, you could somehow get a playoff berth by having a bad record. We're in that division, but if you go back to the 2011 teams, the three other teams in our division are pretty stacked. So it will be a very hard chance to unlock everything. When it comes to contract rules, there's a greater challenge involved. Long-term contracts cannot be offered to low-rated players. So anybody who's a free agent under 80, we're only allowed to sign three years or less on the contract. Now, if they are above 80, there's no limit to how long we can sign them if we can lock them into a long-term deal. Drafted rookies, we will initially be able to do a three-year or less deal with them. And then again, once they develop and they get over that, we can then offer the long-term contract. Uh, as with NCAA, you pretty much recruit and build your teams. And if you've been following that series, it takes a while to build up. I'm kind of aiming for it to be a longer progression in this. Uh, I want Madden 12 to be a really hard challenge for me, and it will be because I'm used to playing collegiate games. And Madden and NFL games in general, my mindset is not always on par for the schemes and adjustments and stuff. So I'm gonna, it's going to be a long journey to get to where we want to be. So yeah, I just come through here to check out the other teams in my division. The Cowboys are 84 overall, the Eagles are 85, and then the Giants are 85. So yeah, I don't think we're going to have an issue with uh, nobody with just lollygagging our way into the playoffs. All right, so here's our preseason schedule they got to set up with. Now, the preseason on this game is pretty neat because you get to test your players and see what they actually have going on, you know, you know, stat wise, because sometimes you have some question marks and you don't know. It's not like other games where they just give it all to you, you scan them and or you scout them and you understand. Our first game is a tough one starting out. Our first preseason game is going to be against the Steelers. Now, before we even get into that, I just want to see we got the Steelers, the Colts, the Ravens, and then the Buccaneers in the preseason. That is kind of crazy that that is the schedule that they've set us up with. So we're definitely going to have some great teams to go against to try out. But let's go ahead and take a look at the roster that they've given us. I picked the cupcake status, so I'm kind of scared to see what we have been given. Okay, as you can see here, this is the way the rosters look prior to playing your preseason games. Now, with most teams, they already know who they have on the team and they'll have a lot less question marks, mostly with some free agents that they signed or people they traded for or the people that they drafted. With the Bourbon City Coopers, we have a brand new expansion team, and unlike when they created the Texans, we don't get to draft players from other teams. We are just signing a whole bunch of free agents, per se, straight out of college who are going to play on the team. So... The reason that I'm not going to show the preseason games in their entirety is just for the fact that I switch in and out all the players because I try to unlock their columns and their stats so we can find out. Now, the first person you see listed there, that Zach Shortell, he would end up being like an 80-something, but he has to be uh, released because you release your quarterback because they give you a decent quarterback. So Stevie Myers, second in control there, or... Jones will be the quarterback of the team. Now, that will add a higher degree of difficulty because we're going to go into game one of the season, essentially, and not really have a grasp of a great offense or defense. Now, hopefully we can figure out a couple of playmakers. As I go through here, you see question marks that show high numbers. There is one player on the team particularly who was a 99 overall question mark, and I thought that was too good to be true. Well, it turned out he had really high speed. He had really high acceleration. And I thought, well, we got our return guy. He ended up tearing his leg up and it ended his career. So I released him. Uh, it's just one of those uh, variables in the game that doesn't exist in Madden nowadays that there can be career ending injuries. And I like that aspect of it. And I like that injuries and things happen and you have to really change up your approach each and every game and it keeps you more involved. So. With that said, I think I'll go from here and show you all just some clips of the preseason games that we played. 
Uh, I'll just go ahead and say right now we went 0-4. Uh, I was not trying to win games. I was just trying players out, trying to learn the offense and things. And we did have some mild successes, but ultimately the computer seems to keep its starters in a lot of the games. And they like to run up the score when that happens. So I learned some things about the team, but not everything. But I do like this element of you have to figure out who your players are. I also did a test on another file where I traded for somebody, and they had one overall, but then when we got them to the team, their overall changed. So that was an interesting dynamic that you don't even know what really the other team's players' overalls are to some degree. All right, so let's take a look at the actual stadium, some sneak peeks, and uh, I'll just do a little commentating. I didn't want to show you case the entire preseason, as I said, because, well, it's a tryout for the team. We get a bunch of uh, undrafted rookies, pretty much, and maybe we'll find some gems, and maybe we want. Here you can see the Cooper Crazies in the background as we get ready to come out on the field for the first time here in Louisville, Kentucky. I won't spoil too much, but you can have a look at our home uniforms. And who is our first opponent? The Pittsburgh Steelers. And, of course, it was young Ben coming out there. Uh, the NFL did us no favors in giving us uh, four tough matchups to begin with. Uh, like I said, we're going to look at a few little clips here. You can see a little bit of the city, the, uh, the stadium in the background as Louisville, Kentucky hosts its first football game, American football game in the pro level. They've got a Major League Soccer team that plays right down the road here, and they, uh, they're they making a name for themselves and similar color schemes, but not exactly the same. But you can see uh, I left this on here so we can take a look at the uniforms. But again, a daunting challenge taking on the Steelers in the first game, but you get a good look at the field. We do have natural grass. It will give if it snows and when it rains, so I thought that would be a fun dynamic. But you can see a lot of these guys here trying out, ready to make the team. And we'll just see what they can do here in the preseason. Now, one of the problems we ran into early is I found out that we just didn't have a defense. As you can see, young Ben Roethlisberger here. This may have been like right after he got in trouble. as He has no problems whatsoever finding Heath Miller for the first down pass. And it just... This was, this the whole game was like that. Uh, you're gonna notice some very lopsided scores. The computer tended to keep their starters in for the whole game, while we would, uh, on the other hand, put other people in and try them out because I was trying to find here. But I did find out that our linebacker core, we do have two strong outside linebackers, but when it comes to middle linebacker, we are very weak. So that may be something we have to look in the draft. There is our head coach, Nicholas Jones, a three-year contract, $1.2 million. He's got a coaching overall rating of 50. So we might have to address that in the off season. There you can see Ben just throwing over top of us. It's already six, nothing. And that wouldn't be the beginning of the end pretty much as the Steelers just pretty much scored on us at will. Uh, Brian left, which is already in the game. Omar Epps there, ready to just push them, and here we go. It's the second quarter. It's 20 to nothing. We do start establishing a run game. Uh, we do have three running backs that seem like they can haul it. Dontrell Reeve, Nico Carter, and Tyree Terrell. Um, some of the players, again, on the team, we had a lot of season-ending injuries, and I just went ahead and cut those guys because some of them are on one-year contracts. Here you can see a nice pass over the top from us, and we would actually get on the board. Uh, with that eventually so we do score in the preseason so for some of you who thought that we wouldn't even be able to do that uh, Stevie Nicks or not Stevie Nicks that's the singer excuse me Stevie Myers uh, he's got great potential he has an overall a potential and uh, he did put the ball on the mark and hopefully we can uh, catapult that forward so here you can see Stevie Myers lines up and we will actually punch the ball in with the quarterback sneak so as I said, we do score a little bit and make some of the games look competitive at some points, but overall, not really a strong showing for the team. Again, we had starters in for the little amount. Obviously, game two, we're going to play a few more, but I, I had people that had 40 overall question marks in the game at some points. And obviously a safety is not going to keep up with starting wide receivers, especially when they got Brown on the team back then and a host of other people to throw to. 
Uh, you can see there, we get an achievement. It says, Happy 20th EA Sports. But when you see the score pop up, uh, Game 1 uh, here at home, a lot of the fans had exited already. 54-28 uh, is that final. Uh, hopefully Mike Tomlin gave some kind words of encouragement to Nicholas Jones. But, uh, yeah, Troy Polamalu, that dude played the entire game. And uh, it was just hard to throw over top of him. But final score in the first game was 54-28. But we did learn a lot about players, and we had to make a number of cuts. Luckily, the NFL in Game 2 gave us the Indianapolis Colts. You know, obviously not a lot of weapons on their team. Nobody, no Hall of Famers, anything like that. You know, uh, just just Peyton Manning in his prime. Uh, and uh, they were definitely ready to come out and play. Uh, Manning comes out, obviously, just like True Life, audibled everything. And it was a really difficult game to play, um, especially on the road when you go to Lucas Oil. It is not a fun time. And uh, the er era where Peyton Manning was god of Indiana uh, was really a tough combination. Here you can see uh, the first play, first part of the game. We actually held them 0-0 with about 4:14 left in the first quarter. Pat McAfee, the YouTube sensation here, punting this one away. So it was really fun to maybe get some pressure on him, but obviously he gets the way. Here is Bolton, who I thought was going to be a really good player for our team, high speed things like that. But an injury would take him out, if not this game, the next one. So there were some bright stars that I was really excited about, and we just lost them. As you can see here, Peyton Manning starts doing Peyton Manning things, hitting Reggie Wayne on the outside, and uh, Mr. Forehead just uh, puts some pressure on old Coach James there, and uh, it would turn out to be a very long day. The Colts fans enjoyed every bit of it, though. Here we are again. They get the ball right back, and he's just going to hand it off. A die goes up the field. Our tackling is abysmal. The ref trying to keep up, and another touchdown. The first of many that the Colts would uh, wham-bam us with. And, of course, they're celebrating way too much in a preseason game. Here we go. It's 21-0. I've got Shortell. He wouldn't stay on the team, but I kept him on for the not having to sign another quarterback. But it bounces off the helmet, and we will catch it. So a guy who's not even going to be on our team makes the luckiest of throws in the preseason. And two seconds before halftime, we actually get on the board. Look at this again. Just a great route ran. And somehow Indianapolis had this one played perfectly, but it will bounce off his helmet and we'll catch it and drop in the end zone. Here's Stevie Myers, who will be the ongoing starter for the team. He's going to launch it, just let it go with everything he's got. And Stewart's going to go up and get that one and come down with it in a good long gain. Uh, we'll have to hopefully keep that going as the year progresses. Having a threat down the field, but... Uh, as we'll look at some of the stats, the deep accuracy is not really good on uh, Stevie Myers. But if you could throw it up there and let your wide receivers make plays, you're in the business. But this game went about as much as you could decide it would go. Um, Indianapolis never in danger of this one. We will put a few points on the board, 14 to their 49. And I know what you're thinking. God, these Coopers are terrible. But got to remember, we have no... Maybe one or two first-round talents. But that's okay, because in the next game we get to play the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm sure we'll get to work on our offense an awful lot with them. Uh, I want you all to check out John Harbaugh here and how swole this man is. That man has seen the weight room more than any other coach in America. You do not mess with John Harbaugh. You also don't mess with this guy. Let me just tell you how fun it was in a preseason game to get to go against Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed out there just made our day abysmal, me trying out the quarterbacks and wide receivers and running any short routes. I mean, getting into that secondary and tertiary uh, layers of the defense was just impossible today. And playing at Baltimore, I love the Ravens, but having to play a preseason game against them to try out your team was the most abysmal thing I've ever had to do. I do believe that they had like a young, young Joe Flacco on the team, but you got Ray Rice out here, and Ray Rice just ran all over us today. We just could not up the middle, around the side. Tackling, as you know, is an issue for our defense, and it just was bad. Here we go, 14 nothing, 54 seconds left in the fourth. Bolger out there, quarterback, and we will actually get to him, and Warren 
Jack Warren, who has one of the lowest ratings of our defensive linemen, will get a sack. And he's actually had an amazing preseason, but he will definitely not be the starter just because his stats are so low. All right, we go here, and it's 17 nothing now. 5-16 till half. They're going to go back and look to throw it again, and that's a throw. And McGee here comes down with it, and that is an interception. And he's going to run that one back. There is a flag clipping, so while he's got a great moment, the ball will come back. McGee is one of those players who did not make the team due to a season-ending injury. So don't get your hopes up on that one. But, again, Baltimore Ravens, they're synonymous with defense. And while we did have a few highlights here and there, ultimately, there was not much. John Harbaugh was too swole to control, and we would be kind of embarrassed here at M&T Bank Stadium. Final score, 48 to nothing. The Coopers ready to go home and lick their wounds, hopefully. We will get the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. As you can see, they got a short 3 nothing lead here. Carpenter playing quarterback. He's going to go back and just throw over us, and we just cannot pull anybody down, and they'll go up. And uh, for a, this should have been our closest game, but honestly, at the time, we had been decimated by injuries. There were some people that wouldn't be ready. A couple of good throws over the middle. We did start establishing a run game and a throw game in this, but ultimately, most of those drives just stalled at the end. And while the Bourbon City Coopers are starting to fundamentally get things together and start learning timings, uh, they've still got a long way to go. And with the progression goals and tiers that we've set that you find in the description, it is going to be a little bit harder. Here you can see Nico Carter up the middle, gashing them for big yardage. Again, I'm kind of excited about our run game, but ultimately we've got to have playmakers make plays in the end zone if we want to do anything. Here's another run by Nico Carter. Just big hits, but he takes it and he pushes through. But Nico Carter will probably be the second string running back to Dontrell Reeve. Uh, but it is good to have him. And then we got Tyree Terrell back there as well. But yes, big strong running backs. Um, I think Carter may be our third down back or Terrell. Terrell probably so. But uh, here you can see just defensively, especially our bigs, we just don't have the weight or the size to compete against an NFL roster yet and uh, we just don't get pressure on the quarterback. And ultimately, that just allowed quarterbacks here in the preseason to just sit back and throw with all the time that they needed. And that is something, but we're not going to be able to address that until the draft. Here's another big run by Nico Carter. Um, we didn't see a lot of Dontrell Reed today because obviously preseason game four, you just don't want your starters out there. Stevie Myers did get a lot of reps because I was settling on him being the starter. Uh, and trying to figure out which receivers we could go with. But as you can see here, it's almost the end of the third quarter, 17 nothing. It actually looks like a football game. We haven't put any points on the board, but with us playing some backups there, Myers takes a big sack. Uh, we are putting out a product that I think that the fans can start to get behind and actually come buy tickets because, you know, your expenses and income is a thing in this game. But ultimately at the end... Here at the preseason, we uh, we didn't come out victorious at all. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would also be too much for us. But we learned a lot about the team, and I think we're ready to go into the future. But uh, no points for us here. Final score for this one. Tampa Bay would eclipse us 27-0, but one of our best showings. That was all about to learn who our team was and what we have. And here we go. We're going to look at the official Urban City Coopers depth chart. Now, this could change as the season goes on because players in this game can get hot streaks and cold streaks. But what we start with is what we have. We see here that Stevie Myers at 6'4", 224, will be our starting quarterback and overall of 69. His backups, he has Josh Portis, who we signed on the free agency market. When we signed him, it said he was a 40-something. It says 50-something now. So he actually jumped Ben Houston, who played a little bit in the – in the preseason, but I'll be honest with you, Ben Houston, he threw the ball 10 yards to the left or right of his target. When we do take a look at just what the throw power is for these people, Stevie Myers has throw power of 72 
and an accuracy of 85. Now, it says here again that Portis has a power arm of 90 and 65, a short accuracy. I don't know if I believe that because since we signed him and got him, it's changed and he's not played any. So I, I don't know if that believes to be true, but you can kind of see. And here we got medium throw accuracy and then the deep accuracy with Seth, Stevie Myers, excuse me, is just awful at this. So short passes and medium passes are okay, maybe. And then, but I don't know about deep. We'll just have to see if we have receivers, which I'll be honest with you, our receivers are probably our lowest point of the team so right now i'm sure you all are percolating your head is is quarterback something we go after at the draft at the end of this season um or do we look for other positions jumping over the halfback i like all three of the people we have here we got dontrell reeve we got nico carter and then we got tire i'm gonna say tire i don't think i, I want to say tyree tyree terrell double t here um Overall, 75 is not bad if we can keep him healthy. Notice his speed and accuracy is way slower than, say, Nico Carter. Now, what I'm planning to do is I, both of these guys did well. Actually, all three of them. Uh, Tyree Terrell was an amazing. I've actually got him designated the third down back because he is much stronger with 82 strength than the other two. So I think he'll be able to push the line if it's a short uh, possession. Uh, but I think that this may be a highlight. We may be a running base team. In fullback, nothing very major here. We got Shakir and Diggs, um, 250 almost weight-wise. Overall, 73. He's going to be utilized as blocking a lot. I'll have to learn how to put him in a position. I do like his speed, so maybe we can run some routes where he can go out and catch something. Uh, his backup, Damar Green, very low. Um, you can't see the potential on the screen. Uh, but I'd like to, for you all to see that aspect. All right, here we come to probably the worst aspect of the team besides maybe the linebacker core and our secondary. Our wide receivers are atrocious. And the reason was is the top two, one got a career-ending injury and the other one was out for the season. So I didn't feel like putting anybody on injured reserve, so I went ahead and cut him, and we had to sign uh, two low people, which are the 44s you see. Kenyon Walters has had the ability to make some catches. He's got okay speed, but 89 is a little lackadaisical. Kimani Joseph, uh, right now we got him in the slot, but honestly, I'm looking at the 4-5 spot down here. These guys have speed. I may throw one of them in the slots. Langford Smith, 50 overall. And here's the guys we're talking about. Teddy Williams here, who doesn't even have a picture. And then Yaman Figures. I like Yaman Figures a lot. He is actually designated our punt and kick returner because he's got 95 speed and 96 acceleration. I think he's going to be a hidden gem. We'll have to look here in a minute at the potential because I think we could maybe develop him into something great. Tight end, I was kind of stuck between all these tight ends. We got uh, Jeremy Heinzman here. Jeremy Heinzman. He's 71 overall, but he dropped so many catchable balls in the preseason, like third and short, and we needed to get a first down, and he would just drop it. Joe Glass here, on the other hand, caught everything thrown at him, even though he has way less stats than Jeremy Heinzman. Uh, Joe Glass reminded me of Johnny Walker from the NCAA franchise, um, or dynasty, excuse me. Uh, he just, everything his way, he caught and picked up yardage. We got Donovan Sanders here, who's the third string. Again, I don't. I would say some of these guys that are really low probably have low potentials. I'll show you their potentials here in a minute and some of their contracts, but I don't know how far we can go. Our offensive line looks okay numbers-wise. Uh, anything below 80 is kind of like backup, so that's kind of what we're playing. We got Dyron Sparks at left tackle, Shundres Campbell, and Jonathan Bates. Uh, honestly, we allowed a lot of sacks during the preseason. Granted, we played, as you saw, Pittsburgh Steelers, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Baltimore Ravens, who are amazing at defense. They did hold their own against Tampa Bay, but not every team in the league is like Tampa Bay. Looking at the left guard position, we got Eric Taylor, 79 overall, Stephen Goodfrey, uh, and Chris Mahan as the backups on that. Chris Mahan is actually a right guard, so... I don't know if I'd actually count him in that. So Taylor and Goodfried uh, are the two guards. In the center position, 
We've got Trevance Gordon Hunter here, uh, 72 overall. Uh, he did get hurt a little bit and missed a little bit of the preseason, so I'm not sure he's 72 overall. He could change a little bit. We got Keiston Pruitt and Kadarius Blake. And that name right there makes me feel like we're in a Keenan Pill uh, segment. We got two right guards, uh, Chandler Frederick and Chris Mahan. Chris Mahan at 75 overall. I have debated maybe moving him over if we need it, but honestly, it's nice to have two 75 linemen at the guard position. Right tackle, Eric Miller. And Laquan Dixon and Kerry Benjamin, which Kerry Benjamin looks really close to Eric Miller. I think it's the same person. They just colored the picture different. But you know what? As long as there's a face, it's, it's nice. But 77, 76 overall and then 49 on Benjamin. Again, our offensive line is it's, it's got backup stats and that shows. Looking at our defensive line, we got Dalton Sanders here. Raphael James and Jack Warren. Jack Warren is 41 overall, but honestly, he showed the most potential out of all these players. Uh, he got sacks. He got through the line. He got to the quarterback and put some pressure on him. Sanders and James, no, no pressure from the left side of the defensive line. At right end, we're only carrying two of these guys. We've got Rahel Boyd. Uh, he's 83 overall, but again, just he didn't play up to his stat line. And maybe he's saving it for the season. I don't know. But he and Tylan Anderson just did not get through to uh, do anything. And I don't know. Our our defense, we rarely, I would say less than 5% of the time on snaps, got pressure on the quarterback. Defensive tackle, A.C. Cobbs. Uh, what's A.C. stand for? Abnormally cruel. Uh, I've got high hopes for him to be a spotlight of our defensive line. Donovan Lawrence right behind him. We've also got Taylor Porter and Jaqueline Smiley. Uh, I think that Cobbs and Lawrence, when we go out in the 4-3 or whatever, will be key people. Again, they didn't play much because when we started getting a lot of injuries, I pulled a lot of the top guys quickly. Um, I just didn't want to see them get hurt and lose them for the year. Looking at linebacker, here's Deshaun Jewett. He is probably one of the gems on the team. I'm not sure how he got on here in a cupcake, but I guess they have to throw you a few. Uh, left outside linebacker, 85 overall. He was everywhere on the field, making tackles. His backup, Wes Shaw. And Maximilian Ambrose uh, with some lower stats. So if Jewett gets hurt, we're probably going to be in some issues. As you notice over there, he is designated one of the captains of the team. Middle linebacker is probably an issue. And you can tell that by the numbers. Uh, P.J. Strong at 59 overall. And his backup, Akeem Randall and Darius Moore, all have stats in the 50s. We struggled to stop runs up the middle. When they made it to that second layer and it required a middle linebacker to be in that spot, they just weren't there to be found. Right outside linebacker, Jarrell Austin, 71 overall. And then it drops down for Darius Moore. Uh, the 59. Uh, again, this is a weak side. Uh, if they don't run the Jewett side, we struggle with stopping the run. Looking at our cornerbacks, we got Tomas Franklin here. Tomas is pretty good uh, speed wise. I, I thought about putting him as a returner, but honestly, we can't afford to lose him. Uh, I am terrified of injuries this season. Uh, his backup, Jamerson Quick, which is a great name. Quick had a number of interceptions during the preseason. But again, that's preseason. But I am worried about his uh, speed of 84 keeping up with them. And then we got Gerald Thomas and Sean Hunt down here who just, I don't know if they got the speed to play that position. For safeties, we got Marcus Doolittle. Doolittle, another solid player. A little slow, but he can accelerate fast. The agility steps up really well. And Davin Walters here. Walters, we've got Walters on both sides, not to get them confused. Um, both of them, I've thought about moving Walters over to corner, uh, but we'll have to just see how the season goes when we start. We've got a tough first game against the Giants, I believe. So we'll be tested in the air from Eli. Um, but we'll just have to see what our other corner does before I start moving people around. Marquise Benjamin here is our safety and Kevin Ramsey. Again, speed is our issue with them. I almost went with Kevin Ramsey just for the speed factor because 74 speed. And again, this is something 
that we may have to move somebody over like Walters again to play this position just so we have that speed to cover everything or we're going to get burnt deep on zone coverage. Our kicker, he's the best person on the team. Everybody say hello to Hunter Gibson. Hello, Hunter. Uh, 95 overall. Uh, he has the ability to kick it decently. Uh, I don't think he's going to be making super long ones, but um, it will help us out uh, when we need to go out there for extra points and everything. 89 kick power, 94 accuracy. That's about all you can ask for uh, from a rookie kicker, and hopefully he develops and we can knock some of the long ones because I would say a lot of our points may come from uh, Bill Goals. Our punter here, we got Brendan Bangley, and I love it. He's got the great thing of banging the ball, and he did nail some. Uh, weirdly enough, Hunter Gibson would actually be a better punter than him, but we're going to let Brendan do it. Uh, Brendan ha put, put him inside the 10-yard line three or four times, at just uh, darts of kicks. So I think we're kind of happy on that. Just real quick, wanted to show you all who I put on. And you can see here, this Yaman figures. When I put him as a kick returner and punt returner, he becomes 99 overall because he's got 95 speed, 96 acceleration. And then if you look at his carrying, it's actually 73. Now, the issue is the catching. He's going to have to catch it, 58 catching. But if he can get it, I think he can get us up the field quickly. Our backup uh, halfback, Nico Carter, will be his backup a, a little bit slower and same acceleration, but obviously he can carry it a little bit better. Um, I'm interested to see if this gamble pays off. A lot of a lot of everything is on Yaman's shoulders to try to get our season going when we get the ball. All right, so just real quick, I'm going to go through here while I talk and just show you all. You can see some of the contracts and the players. You can see like Stevie Myers has an overall A potential here. That's what this is. And the potential in this game is kind of weird because it really limits like a player who could play well on the field. Like, let's say Ben Houston was amazing, but his potential is an F. He's not going to get a lot more stat points. So you've got to find these players and find out that they're really an A, which we've only played, they've only played in parts of a preseason game. So that might not even be accurate. But for right now, uh, you could see that. <laughs> I love that the three in the row here are bad. So it looks like that Nico Carter has the best ability or potential and Reeve would be a B. And it's sad, though, because like I told you all, um, Tyree Terrell here played amazing, but he's a D potential. So that limits him, even though I really like the way that he played. Uh, Shakir Diggs, an A. Uh, our receiving crew, yeah. Uh, maybe Joseph, Kamani Joseph here may be a gem, but everybody else is severely going to be limited. Langford Smith, figures is an F. That breaks my heart that he's got like those stats, but he's not going to grow. And just going through here, a couple of good tight ends. That helps out. Our linemen, looks like we got some promise in them. Uh, and this will come around toward the end of the season. We'll know if this is more accurate, and we'll know what we need to really draft. If you've got an F person um, or F potential in somebody, you might want to draft somebody else if you can't handle it, which we may not be able to handle in the free agency. Uh, and that may be an issue. Like, I want to look at these linebackers and see what their cap is. All right, it says P.J. Strong has A potential, but what is that going to bring him up from a 58? Uh, so we'll just have to see. Like, cornerback, we are going to be limited. So maybe that's something we have to target in the draft. Uh, Doolittle's an A. He has a chance to be a star. But they'll probably want a lot of money. Uh, if they get really good, I like that Hunter Gibson's an A and our punter is an A. So, yeah, we kind of lacked, uh, did well, but a lot of low Fs on the team and Ds. So, we're going to have our work cut out for us. And with that said, that is your introduction to the Bourbon City Coopers franchise. We start year one. The New York Giants are coming to Louisville, Kentucky. You'll get to see the field. You'll get to see more of the fans and just little flashbacks. And hopefully you're on board to support the Coopers and their journey to build a powerhouse of a team right next to the Ohio River. I know I'm excited. The Bourbon Trail is all lit up and ready to go. And I hope you'll join me along the way. So as always, thanks for watching. God bless. I will see you all next time. Good night, everybody.